New reaction from Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway about the approach Donald Trump took during a speech in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania yesterday. So you're going to recall that he ramped up his accusations against the media and vowed to sue the women who have accused him of sexual misconduct. Well, here's what Conway said President moments ago. Lincoln, Did you know he was going to start with this list of grievances that might undercut the message? Well, he delivers his own speeches. This is his candidacy. He's the guy who's running for the White House, and he has the privilege to say what he wants. At the same time, I will tell you, having worked on the messaging in and around the actual contract with America 20-some years ago, Jake, uh, there was plenty of talk then about how we as Republicans could not get a fair shake uh, from the media. As the Democrats focus their efforts on battleground states today, the campaign is responding to reports that it's focusing its efforts on down-ballot races. Look at our schedules for the next 17 days. You'll know we're not taking anything for granted. Um, it's been a season of surprises. We, we like what we see now. We <clears throat> like the early voting activity and the absentee ballot requests coming in in other states, but we're, we are not taking anything for granted. There's a special opportunity that popped up late in Arizona uh, where Donald Trump's divisive rhetoric about Latinos, uh, his, his shameful remark about Senator John McCain and POWs has put that state into play. It is possible to win it, but it is going to be razor thin there. It's going to be tough. It's an uphill climb, and we've got to stay focused on these other states. And joining me now, MSNBC political analyst Jonathan Alter, a Daily Beast columnist and clearly a Chicago Cubby fan, <laughs> and author of The Center Holds, Obama and His Enemies, and in Washington, Jennifer Rubin, opinion writer for The Washington Post. Dude, Jonathan, yes. I mean, th this is my show. I'm an okay. L.A. Dodger fan. I you understand are treading that. on some very I understand thin that. water, I'm my take friend. take the cap off in one second. Alex, but I grew up just a few blocks from Wrigley Field. I know. And I have been waiting for more than 50 years I know. praying for this. I spent my childhood at Wrigley Field. Okay, I'm happy so you for you. You have to give me this. I'm giving you that just because I like you so much as a friend as well. Okay. Okay. Let's get to talking about this, though. During Donald Trump's so called closing arguments yesterday, he ran through this list of top priorities. So let's take a listen to that. A constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress, a hiring freeze on all federal employees to reduce federal workforce through attrition, to totally renegotiate NAFTA. We will begin removing the more than 2 million criminal illegal immigrants from the country. Okay, there was that, Jonathan. But after that, the straight talk, you know, Trump delves into attacks on Clinton, attacks against the woman accusing him of sexual misconduct, calling him liars, promising he's going to sue him. Do you think the original message got lost, or do you think he gained some ground yesterday? Totally lost. I mean, Kellyanne Conway admitted uh, that uh, all the work they did with this new contract with America was all for nothing because he went off script. What we're forgetting here, Alex, with all of the uh, talk about, you know, which I've contributed to a lot of Trump being a menace to our country and other people liking Trump, we've forgotten that he's a bad candidate. He doesn't have good candidate skills. His lack of discipline, uh, his, his, his unwillingness to ever, ever just concede the point and move on is really hampering his campaign and why this could uh, turn into a landslide. And Jennifer, I know that you panned Trump's performance Thursday night at the Alfred E. Smith dinner. You know, Trump was booed by the high society crowd there after he turned the traditional rose. He went into an all out attack against Hillary Clinton, who was seated right there next to him. Um, you wrote that Trump got booed at the Al Smith dinner. That's like a kid getting booed in a school play. Trump yes. on Thursday didn't or couldn't control himself and apparently couldn't find anyone willing to write good jokes for him. Had he shown up in swim trunks and a bathrobe at the white tie affair, he could not have seemed more out of place. I mean, that did definitely get a chuckle when reading through it. But Jennifer, his base seems to love him as an outsider. They've proven to love the attacks. Does it even matter if a high society crowd in New York boos him? The problem is his base isn't big enough to win the election. It's not even big enough to make it close. Um, by the way, Alex, I'm a Dodger fan, too, so I'm yes. in morning oh. this morning. I'm going to give you more time. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's, that's okay. what I... We yeah, won. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we would need more time in the game, too. Um, Donald Trump has made a star of himself catering to a very select 
strip of Americans. Um, your previous guests were talking about women, Latinos, and just about everybody else in America except for less educated, uh, lower and middle class white males. You can't win an election in America with a demographic like that. And I think Jonathan's right. Not only does he not have candidate skills, but he is emotionally, I think, roiled by this. He is going to lose, and he knows he's going to lose to a girl of all people. Mm. And he is all fit for vengeance, for for um, you know attacks on these women who have come forward. This is a guy who was running for president of the United States, and his first thing about being elected would be that he would use the opportunity to go after these women or to sue uh, the media. It's um, a little pathetic, actually, as uh, we wind down. You know, Jonathan, in, in the wake of the widening lead, Hillary Clinton seems to be shifting some of her focus, lending a hand now to the Democrats running for Senate. Let's take a listen uh, to what she said yesterday in Pennsylvania. Pat Toomey heard Donald attack a grieving Gold Star family who lost their son in Iraq. He heard Donald call Mexican immigrants rapists. He heard him say terrible things about women. If he doesn't have the courage to stand up to Donald Trump after all this, then can you be sure he'll stand up for you when it counts against powerful interests? Is she no longer looking for a win, Jonathan? Is she looking for a mandate from the Oval Office to Capitol Hill? Well, she's going to need as many Democratic senators uh, as she can get, and they've they've got the uh, Republican candidates now in, to use a baseball metaphor, in a rundown. They're trapped between first and second. You know, do they go to second and and back Trump, or do they try to go back to first uh, where they were before and being skeptical about Trump? And they're trapped. They don't know which way to go. These Republicans. That's a bad position for a base runner, and it's a really bad position for somebody who's on the ballot. So uh, the Democrats are going for the burn now. Um, they're, they're really hoping that they can convert uh, this uh, uh, antipathy toward Trump toward to more wins uh, mm -hmm. down ballot. A lot of times presidential candidates have ignored the down ballot candidates because they're so interested in just saving their own skin, getting elected themselves. This time might be different. Mm -hmm. She does have a couple of weeks to try to pull some others over the finish line. So, Jennifer, uh, looking at the states like Ohio and Pennsylvania, Donald Trump still has a fair amount of support there. But do you think, conversely to what Jonathan's saying, is it a risky strategy for Senate hopefuls in those states to bring Trump into their argument? Well, I don't think anybody who on the Republican side is actively uh, courting uh, Trump's support. You know, it's an interesting thing. Um, in some sense, Trump is helping these folks because he is so awful, he's so sui generis, that no one really thinks that Rob Portman is Donald Trump. No one really thinks that Kelly A. Ott is Donald Trump. So, so far, they have been running so far above the ticket. Um, the question is, does the gap just become so wide that it becomes impossible? Asking a candidate in a blue or purple state, if you're a Republican, to run 10, 15 points above the top of the ticket, that's a very tall order. But the ones who have been successful so far, Portman, Marco Rubio have been able to carve out a separate identity and play it local. It's the Tip O'Neill adage, all politics is local. So they've mm -hmm. talked about opiate abuse. They've talked about issues, uh, Zika virus for, um, Mar for uh, Marco Rubio, for example, trying to differentiate themselves simply on the issues. The question is, do people really buy that Pat Toomey is Donald Trump? Do they really buy that he doesn't have their interests in heart simply because he won't tell this guy off definitively? By the mm -hmm. way, Pat Toomey has not endorsed uh, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a harder stretch for her to make. She's also been doing something that's been interesting that's been in her self-interest, and that is saying to Republicans, I know you don't favor Donald Trump. Come with me. I get it. You're disappointed in your own party. Yeah. She has a fleet of Republican supporters. So that kind of muddies this message that. with the senators. There, sure. there's, there's a okay, patriotic listen. point here, uh, really Alex. Really quick, because we want to really, get to Chicago. Really quick. In other words, if you are Marco Rubio and you've said and you believe that Donald Trump is a con man, to turn around and say that we should put a con man in charge of our constitution, in charge of our country, well, knowingly do that, that's putting party ahead of country. It's not patriotic. And, and, and I think that's going to be a problem. That is them. exactly what President Obama was calling him out earlier this week while he was in Florida. Okay, guys, good to see you both. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Okay. You want to stay Thanks, tuned because we're about to show you your neighborhood. Ooh, there it is, <laughs> Wrigley Field. Ron Mott has a report from there because there's a lot to talk about from Chicago. Next.